Okay, hello, welcome to a video looking at barriers to entry and market power. So what are barriers to entry? Well, basically it's any strategy uh, put in place by an existing firm, a well-established business designed to block potential entrants, potential rival firms, from entering a market profitably. Essentially, barriers to entry uh, try to protect the existing firm's market power and maintain supernormal profits in the long term and increase producer surplus. Some of that profit may find its way back, of course, to, to shareholders. There are many examples of barriers to entry, and we'll certainly come across quite a few of them in this short revision video. Perhaps the biggest, perhaps the most significant barrier is the cost asymmetry between an established firm in a market and a potential rival. And this can be due to economies of scale. You see, if you've been in the market for some time, you may well have scaled up production of a good or service, and that has allowed you to exploit economies of scale, which have brought down your long-term, long and average cost. That can lead to a cost asymmetry. In other words, the existing firms have lower costs of supply than the potential rival. We'll come back to that in a second. Linked to it is vertical integration, where businesses have control of the supply chain. Perhaps you have a business that can, can literally control the chain from extraction of natural resources all the way through to the final products heading to the consumer. Vertical integration often gives firms cost advantages, uh, which give them, which basically cement their market power. And brand loyalty is also very important as a barrier to entry. When brand loyalty is high, the cross price elasticity of demand tends to go down. You see what matters here is that consumers are less willing to switch if a new firm comes into the market. And strong brand loyalty increases the marketing costs of breaking into a market successfully. Just want to spend a little while with you thinking about why economies of scale matter as a barrier to entry. And in particular, what do we mean by a cost asymmetry between established and new firms? Well, uh, the cost asymmetry is where the incumbent firm, in other words, the existing firm, uh, they have lower costs than one or more of their potential entrants. And uh, that means, for example, that if a new firm enters a market, the established firm might be able to take advantage of those lower costs by cutting prices and making life pretty tough for the rival firms coming in. What way of looking at this is to use cost and revenue curve analysis. I just wanted to take you through this. It's a, a good way of getting high marks for analysis in your A-level and IB answers. I've assumed here constant cost. The marginal and average cost of production is constant. That saves me drawing all those fiddly cost curves. So basically, the supply curve is, is, is the cost curve for the established firm. And they could well profit maximise at output Q1. And the price is shown there. Um, because they have market power. Now, cost asymmetry means that their costs, their average and marginal costs, are, are lower than a potential new entrant. And I've drawn the new entrance costs in on the diagram in purple here. Can you see that? There is quite a big gap, quite a big cost advantage between the existing firm and the rival firm. So this assumes, this analysis assumes, that the existing firms have a cost advantage. Now, why does that matter? Well, it gives them scope to use something called limit pricing. Limit pricing is basically where a firm who's been in the market for some time tries to deter the entry or the expansion of new firms. Uh, they do this by setting a price that's below their own profit maximizing price, but above the competitive level, and perhaps a price below what they perceive to be the costs of the, exist of the new firms. Limit pricing means a short-term departure from profit maximization. Let's go back to our diagram. Can you see here that the purple lines above the orange line, the existing firm, has lower costs than the new entrant? Now, at the moment, they're charging a profit maximizing price, but of course, they don't have to do that. For example, they could charge this limit price a lower price, sell more output, Q2. Now, they're making less profit, but uh, can you see they're pricing below the costs of a new entrant, which would make life tough for new firms trying to break into the market. And who knows, those firms may not come in, in which case the firm can then revert back to their original 
profit maximizing equilibrium. Limit pricing on the basis of cost asymmetries is a good example to use of um, a barrier to entry, a strategic barrier to entry used by existing firms. Lots of other entry barriers. Uh, it may well be the case that you have control of a key platform. Amazon Web Service is a good example of that. Um, you may well have uh, some intellectual property protected by trademarks and copyrights and patents. So on the bottom right there, we would call those legal barriers to entry. And actually, the one I've left until last is the middle of the bottom row there. Uh, the expertise, the goodwill and the reputation of existing firms is something that cannot be underestimated. Once you've been in a market for some time, it's linked to brand loyalty for sure. But once customers are habitual purchasers of a product, they, they understand a business, they have a good relationship and the business has managed to build up goodwill and hopefully good reputation. That can be a major barrier to entry or entry of new firms. So why are entry barriers significant? Well, essentially, the, the height of a barrier to entry, if you like the height of the hurdle that new firms must get over, is going to affect the concentration of a market in the long run. In technical terms, what we say is that when the entry barriers are high and when there are also exit costs, the cost of leaving a market, that makes a market less contestable. Consequence can be that the existing firms can charge monopoly prices and they can use their market power to make supernormal profits, uh, leading to a loss of allocative efficiency. And there's some thinking as well that when the barriers to entry are high, when, con when contestability is low, that can also cause dynamic and productive efficiency to suffer. There could be some excellent efficiencies, there could be some diseconomies of scale, and perhaps a slowdown in the pace of innovation. A good example to use is to think about a market you may not know too much about, the commercial banking sector. Um, some examples of barriers to enter in the commercial banking market. Firms like Metro Bank and Revolu and Monzo have tried to break into uh, a market that's dominated by the likes of Barclays and uh, HSBC, for example. And here are some of the barriers to entry. First of all, you need a license. There are, there are regulatory barriers in the market. So you need a license. The Bank of England needs to allocate licenses to give you the, the legal right to operate and take deposits from savers, for example. And then there are those kind of natural barriers to entry, those entry costs. You need to, to spend money on marketing. You need to build your IT and payments infrastructure. That's crucial, obviously, in banking. The existing banks have probably vertically integrated. They've got big branch networks, perhaps. They've got some a lot of consumer loyalty. I've personally been with my own bank now for over 30 years. I haven't really thought of switching. It doesn't, doesn't cross my mind. Uh, and there's something called first mover advantage that uh, the existing banks, by building up brand loyalty, if they're in there first, uh, they can they can make life tough for new entrants. And of course, they've got access to, to, to market funding because uh, they've got a reputation. However, there is some evidence that the UK banking sector, commercial banks, is becoming more contestable. Perhaps the barriers to entry are coming down. You have some pretty established challenges. First Direct, Metro, TSB, uh, Trustee Savings Bank, which demerged from Lloyd's a few years ago. Virgin Money is quite a significant player. They bought the Northern Rock branch network when that business uh, went in, got into difficulty. Then you've got your online-only banks. Some of you may know businesses like Monzo and Zopper and Tandem. The supermarkets, of course, have tried to break into the banking sector. As the money, m and Sainsbury's, Tesco has had a bank, they've now, I think they've closed that. But the supermarket's quite big players. So too, the emergence of fintech companies, uh, Asimo, Izettle and Curve. And who knows, the next wave, the digital platform companies, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Amazon. Who knows, Google, Apple and Amazon could well be big players in the banking sector, in the financial services uh, big players, really significant uh, entrance in the years to come. So perhaps those barriers to entry are coming down. And some economists make the case for saying, actually, yes, the barriers to entry in many industries are perhaps getting lower. So we're finished with this, actually, and think about some of the reasons why that's the case. One is the rise of sort of lean startups. These are businesses, Eric Rees wrote the, the book on this called The Lean Startup. 
These are businesses which basically try and fly with a minimum of cost. And their aim is to get a minimum viable product, like an app, for example, onto the market as soon as they pos as soon as they can, get it up and running, see what the reaction is to it, constant iteration, constant new versions, and see where the app or the business flies. A lot of businesses uh, are not thinking the orthodox, there, so they're very disruptive. So you think about, for example, uh, businesses such as Uber coming in and Airbnb and the low cost airlines and uh, the deep discounters such as Aldi and Lidl, you know, they often have different pricing models, for example, than the established firms uh, successfully breaking into markets. Quite a few firms are superb, absolutely amazing at viral marketing. They've got savvy social media teams, very young, dynamic media teams, uh, and they're very successful in breaking into markets uh, because they can market their products at the fraction of the cost of the old scale firms. In class, we thought about, I asked, I asked my students for some examples and they came up with Gymshark, very, very successful emerging UK sports fashion brand and uh, Depop, of course, which is a, a platform for trading, trading personal items. The sharing economy is growing. People, a lot of businesses now lease rather than buy equipment. They lease retail space, pop-up shops, uh, leased capital equipment. That brings down the cost and the risk of entering a market. A lot of businesses uh, rely heavily on open source software, which is freely available to build, develop, and build an app and develop a, uh, a systems, payment system. And increasingly, we're also seeing the rise of flexible manufacturing. This is where businesses use things like additive printers, 3D printers, um, self, the rise of self-publishing. Is a good example of flexible manufacturing trying to break into the publishing market well just be flexible be low cost be lean and uh, see where it gets you so perhaps the entry barriers are coming down a really good example is the is the parcel industry there is now intense competition between lots and lots of parcel firms uh, including parcel force the royal mail business fedex dpd and hermes etc uh, and of course there's the way more competition there, than there ever was and a lot of these businesses are now brand, well-known brands, they're scaled uh, and they offer a full range of services. And of course, even they are now facing even more competition from click and collect from supermarkets, from intelligent parcel locker businesses, and from businesses such as Uber and uh, Shuttle, which is bought by eBay. Lots of, again, little players in the market challenging the dominance of existing players. So this is a really interesting topic. Any market where existing players can try to prevent the entry of new, new rivals is where you're going to bring into your discussion, into your analysis, and I hope your evaluation too, uh, the nature of barriers to entry. It's one of those topics where if you've got some good examples, you'll be in fantastic shape to write a, a top answer. Okay, I hope you found that useful, and uh, thanks for joining me.